On November 30th, former National Security Advisor and U.S. Secretary of State Henry Alfred Kissinger passed away at the age of 101. Intelligence officer, doctor of political science, diplomat, recognized patriarch of international relations, playboy and the man who set the vector of U.S. foreign policy during the Cold War. A statesman to whom the United States owes the policy of detente with the USSR, the restoration of relations with China, the concept of nuclear deterrence and the end of the Vietnam War. But before we begin subscribe to our channel, like and share the video on social media. Next, we will tell you how a Jewish boy from Bavaria made a brilliant career abroad, won the hearts of American elites and determined the foreign policy course of the United States for decades to come. In 1944, young Sergeant Henry Kissinger found himself in Germany as part of the U.S. Army Counterintelligence Corps. In his homeland, which he had been forced to leave six years earlier as a 15-year-old boy for fear of Nazi persecution. Henry emigrated to the United States with his family, and later he led a team searching for Nazis hiding among the civilian population, first in Krefeld, then in Hanover and Bensheim. His knowledge of German culture and language proved particularly valuable to the Allies. Avoiding reprisals and pressure on the local population, he was able to induce many Germans to cooperate, playing an important role in the capture and arrest of Nazi officials. Some of them were later brought to justice at the Nuremberg Trials. And Henry Kissinger himself was later awarded the Bronze Star, an award given to the U.S. military for special achievements in the service. Already in 1945, the 21-year-old officer would be able to visit his hometown of Firth in Bavaria in search of surviving relatives and friends. However, of all the people he had known since childhood, only one of his classmate friends survived. Henry Kissinger returned to the United States with a heavy heart, but more loyal to the U.S. than ever, as this country offered his family freedom and security in a difficult situation. After his official discharge from the U.S. Armed Forces in 1947, Henry Kissinger takes his first steps on the way to big politics. He enters the prestigious Harvard University, where he becomes one of the best students, and receives a bachelor's degree in political science in 1950, a master's degree in 1952, and a doctoral degree in 1954. At the university, the young scholar meets a new patron, known for his fiery anti-Soviet fervor professor William Yandel Elliott, who was once an advisor to Franklin Roosevelt and several other presidents. Henry Kissinger educated inside the walls of Harvard University, outside the major centers for the study of world politics at Yale and Chicago did not bear the mark of a particular theory of international relations. He was initially interested not in structures or systems but in the history of ideas, and in the role of the individual in governance and the mitigation of threats in world politics. Together they launched the annual International Seminar, a summer conference based at Harvard University where global foreign policy initiatives and strategies could be discussed in accordance with moral leadership and the principles of democracy. For example, Henry Kissinger argued that the U.S. needs to better broadcast its ideology. A new intellectual platform designed to bring together young scholars, professionals, and policymakers and to increase the influence of democratic values attracted the attention not only of elites but also of the CIA, which supported the site and sponsored its growing budget for a decade. Shortly before his graduate studies, the Psychological Strategy Board, which was developing propaganda programs to promote democracy and weaken the international community's belief in communism, repeatedly sought Henry Kissinger's advice. In 1955, he became a consultant already to the Operational Coordinating Board and Director of Foreign Affairs and Nuclear Weapons Research at the Council on Foreign Relations. But Henry Kissinger's real popularity came in 1957, when his first book, Nuclear Weapons and Foreign Policy, was published and soon became a bestseller. Although this work reflected the views of many military researchers of the period, it brought the author to the attention of prominent American politicians and military officials. In the study, Henry Kissinger drew attention to the imperfections of U.S. atomic diplomacy, pointing out that the U.S. nuclear strategy could not have a deterrent effect on the USSR because it guaranteed only an extreme response in the form of mutual annihilation and a nuclear apocalypse. U.S. opponents on the world stage could be virtually certain that under such conditions atomic weapons would never be used, and this would lead to bolder expansionism on the part of the USSR. That is why the young scientist proposed the use of lower-yield nuclear weapons capable of delivering highly effective strikes in relatively small geographic areas and leveling the significant numerical superiority of the Warsaw Pact Organization's military units in the European theater. Thus, as a counterbalance to the strategy of massive retaliation, in the 1960s, the U.S. developed the concept of flexible response, which provides for the measured use of force in response to aggression. One of Henry Kissinger's professors at Harvard University, Sam Beer, later recalled that the latter, 
intuitively understood the importance of ideas in world affairs. And so it was. As a scholar of European diplomatic history and a representative of political realism in international relations theory, Henry Kissinger believed that the U.S. should abandon its quest for global hegemony and pursue a policy of balance of power and mutual deterrence, as it had under the Vienna system of international relations. Henry Kissinger's research is an intellectual continuation of the classical tradition of political realism. The scholar believed that nothing has fundamentally changed in the world since the times of Thucydides and Niccolò Machiavelli. The military and economic capabilities of a state determine its foreign policy, while international institutions are secondary and unstable. At the same time, any state seeks to ensure security and survive in this aggressive world. Henry Kissinger is undoubtedly one of the most prominent and influential representatives of the U.S. school of political realism. One of the postulates of this school is that morality does not matter. States should be guided in their policies by national interests, and if national interests imply a departure from some moral and ethical values, so be it. Having established himself in the scientific expert community, Henry Kissinger began working as a political consultant in parallel back in the 1950s. Even though he was politically and ideologically close to the Republicans, he was also invited to advise high-ranking members of the U.S. Democratic Party. Henry Kissinger began his political career as the right-hand man of Republican New York Governor Nelson Rockefeller, while advising Dwight Eisenhower, John Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson. Direct involvement in politics began for the scholar in 1969 with the rise to power of the 37th President of the United States, Richard Nixon, under whom he was appointed head of the National Security Council. This post Henry Kissinger held for six years, and since September 1973, in parallel began working as Secretary of State. When Richard Nixon became at the helm, the U.S. had already participated in the Vietnam War for four years on the side of South Vietnam, resisting the communist government of North Vietnam. The politician's main campaign promise, however, was to achieve an honorable peace. Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger believed that only pressure from the Soviet Union could bring a victorious North Vietnam to the negotiating table. The United States initiated a series of covert measures to convince the USSR that the U.S. was so unwilling to make concessions to the Viet Cong that it was preparing for nuclear war. In 1969, the U.S. dramatically increased the number of reconnaissance flights around the Soviet Union brought strategic aviation to the highest possible state of alert, and dispersed nuclear weapons carriers. Operation Giant Spear was meant to frighten the Soviet leadership and force it to limit its support for North Vietnam. Even at 100, Henry Kissinger displays genuine intellectual curiosity, continuing to participate in international events and comment on the most significant events in world politics. Years later, despite his unconditional contribution to U.S. foreign policy strategy, the decisions of the patriarch of international politics seem ambiguous to many. Some call Henry Kissinger the most effective secretary of state in the last half a century, while others demand an investigation into his actions and even his arrest. Human rights activists, writers and publicists accuse the diplomat of crimes against humanity. Thus, journalist Christopher Hitchens in his book, The Trial of Henry Kissinger, accused the diplomat of leading the bombing of Cambodia of developing and implementing a plan to kidnap and kill the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Chile René Schneider as part of a campaign to persecute and destroy the political opposition in South American countries, as well as of condoning the genocide of the Bengali population of East Pakistan by the Pakistani authorities and the extermination of the inhabitants of East Timor by Indonesia during its occupation in 1975. He is also accused of participating with the CIA in the bloody coup of General Augusto Pinochet against the elected socialist president of Chile Salvador Allende in 1973. With this, Henry Kissinger's role as a great tactician and strategist is also being reconsidered. His foresight is sometimes attributed to his masterful management of his own fame, creating an areola of mystery and turning diplomacy into a spectacle. According to international history professor Mario Del Perro, Henry Kissinger is neither a war criminal nor a thinker, as he is only a product of a certain period of American diplomacy. Guys, if you liked our video, but you haven't subscribed to us yet, subscribe right now and post the video on social networks, there will be a lot of interesting things in the next episodes. See you soon. Bye.